Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Today in Toronto, uh, where I'm from, it's the Pride Parade um, for the LGBTQ community. And um, before I get in, oh, before I go in, get into that, I need to pray, especially for this sermon. Father, I thank you and I praise you. Father, just let my words be loving and whatever you're going to say, Lord Jesus. Let it be spoken in love. Let it be spoken in truth. Let it be spoken in the grace that you have um, given to all of us. We have been we have been not so gracious to particular sectors of society, Lord, um, and Lord Jesus, um, let not graciousness be confused with complacency. We ought to be gracious, but we ought not to be complacent. Uh, Lord Jesus, right now, today, um, Lord Jesus, permeate the atmosphere with your love. And with your grace. God, I bless you and I praise your holy name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, like I said before I started to pray, today in Toronto, my, my city, um, it's the Pride Parade, which is the LGBTQ's um, parade today, and the Lord gave me an interesting word on it, I recorded it, and I'm going to play it for you before I start this sermon. This sermon is called, Speak Out, Speak Loud, and Speak Now. And it is, it is going to be, this little clip is going to be the only thing I'm going to say on the um, issue of, of pride and uh, on the issue of homosexuality. This clip is going to say it all. And then I'm going to move on to just speaking out. But I need to say what the Lord has said uh, to me about this issue. And this recording says it all. I hope you guys can hear this recording. My phone is right by the video camera, so I hope um, it'll pick it up.
Okay, so that was the word, and I just found it very interesting. Uh, when I look back um, biblically um, at the people Jesus hung around with, he hung around with the people that were questionable, like he hung around with people who were uh, what, what we would call them um, uh, prostitutes. Or, like, if you want to use slang terms, we would call them hookers, and we would... He hung around with tax collectors, and in that time, the tax collectors were the most hated people in the society of uh, Second Temple Judaism. The tax collectors were considered the worst people. Because they would take people's money, and if they couldn't pay, they would put them out of their homes and have people starting, have people starving. So they were the most hated people, and Jesus hung around the most hated, reprehensible people ever. And I look, I look at the body now. And I'm starting to ask some really dangerous questions, such as, are we really reflecting Christ? Are, are, is, is the way we do church now the way Jesus would do it? Because I think majority, to be honest, the majority of the way we do church now it didn't come from Jesus, it came from other Christian leaders through the generations. And, and each generation has just followed it, maybe changed it a bit, but um, I think each generation has followed it. And it's time to kind of break the cycle, kind of... Like, really ask God, Lord, how do you want your church to be run? What, what is your opinion on this? And I believe that God has several opinions on several different things. Um, I believe the principles of God's opinions are in the Word of God, and I believe that the Word of God is a mirror and a window. But I tend to believe that his revelation was not meant to stop with Peter or with Paul or with any of those guys. I, I believe that they were samples of what God could do, but not the end of what God would do. And I think we get so focused on the, you know, sometimes the act of people that we don't see, that they're, they're people just like us. And we may not be gay or lesbian or transgender, but we still have things that will nail us to the wall. I say this all the time. I say, I say we, we all have a scripture that will nail us to the wall. And I, I say we all have a scripture that when we look at it, we cringe because we know we struggle with that, whether it be gossip, whether it be too much time online, whether it be um, uh, greed and money, whether it be um, heterosexual adultery, we all have things that we struggle with. And I think when you can put yourself into, those, into a person's shoes, you understand 
And I think that many of us are afraid to just talk to someone gay or someone lesbian because we're afraid that, like, sometimes we're afraid that they'll taint us. But I, because I live in the uh, homosexual area, I know a lot of uh, people that are homosexual. I work with some people that are homosexual, and they they just want to talk just like us, but nobody's bothered to really talk to them. We've bothered to judge them and whatever. And the thing is, you don't change people by changing laws. You, you don't, first of all, you don't change people at all. And, and changing, and protesting to get laws not changed is not going to help a lick at all. What you need to, what we st need to start doing is having conversations and understanding their side. And when we understand their side, then we can go to God and ask the question, Lord, how do I minister to them? And the Lord has answers, not only in his word, but by his revelation to minister to them. We go off half, half, we go off wholeheartedly and Bible thump and say, you're going to hell and this and that. And it doesn't do anything for people. And I'm not saying that we need to be weak and hide God's truth, but we need to have wisdom. And all, and his wisdom comes from him. And I believe he has a plan if we only ask him. And even going over to the issue of abortion, and the legalization of abortion and late-term abortions and whatever, uh, we often get on our high horse and, and protest and whatever, but that doesn't help anyone. That just holding up a picture of an aborted baby just um, grosses out people. It doesn't prevent people from having abortions, you know. Um, my question is for all those preachers that's, that, that, um, get on their pulpits on Sunday morning or whatever and rail at people who have had abortions. My question is to you, uh, pastor, bishop, have you ever sat down with a young lady that has had an abortion? Have you ever, have you ever known their stories, their struggles? And yes, we do need to stand up for the unborn child, but first we need to be there for those people who are making those decisions. We need to surround them with love. We need to surround them with care, not judgment. Your judgment is going to drive people away from God and not draw them to God. So, um, so instead of railing on your, uh, on your high horse and on your pulpit, have you ever thought of putting together an adoption program in your church or putting together a program not just about abstinence, 
but about self-esteem, self-love, because it starts there. Or for women who have been raped and get pregnant and have no idea what to do, and abortion seems like the easiest way, because you don't have to carry it for nine months. You just go in for an appointment an hour or two, and you just, you know, the issues taken care of. It, se it seems like, but what they don't tell you is most times, well, I've never had an abortion, thank God, but I've read most times people that have had abortions have long-term mental effects that they never get over. And it is, it behooves us as the church to start coming up with, with better solutions instead of talking uh, from our pulpits and just being like Christ. And most people are afraid to get in the muck and the mire. They're afraid to talk to uh, talk about the stories talk to people that, that that are affected by these stories they're afraid to talk to transgender individuals they're afraid to talk to gay people they're afraid to talk to lesbian people and then they just rail on Sunday mornings or whatever and have these rallies. Listen, yeah, marriage was, um, was ordained by God. We know that. But changing the laws of marriage is not going to save people. Jesus is. So even if the marriage laws don't change, like, didn't change, they're, they're all changed now, but even if they didn't change, even if we won, there would still be homosexual people living together, homosexual people um, in relationships together, so it wouldn't change anything. What would change everything is Jesus is Jesus. People need Jesus, and that's what people need. And we need to understand that uh, changing things like marriage laws, abortion laws, are not going to do anything. Because behind every abortion, um, behind every homosexual uh, transgender uh, relationship. There is a person, and that person, regardless of their orientation, regardless of who they are, needs Jesus. And when they receive Jesus, he will take care of whatever he needs to take care of. And the power of love is so is so life transforming they won't even know what hit them and i think that's what people need and people um think when i say show them love it's uh, like you're condoning or whatever no for me um for me, love is embracing a person despite whether you agree with them or not. It's saying, I may not agree with you or understand you, but I embrace you because you're a person and God has called me to love you. The second issue I wanted to talk about today is... Um, just going away from the homosexual issue and the abortion issue, it's just speaking out on anything. 
Um, I'm not the kind of person uh, to speak out. I'm more, I'm more the kind of person to stay quiet. But the Lord's saying, speak out, speak loud, speak now. He's like, it's time for individuals in their families, in their homes, in their churches to speak out. Not only about the homosexual issue or the abortion issue or hot button issue, but anything. Because silence is approval. If you're silent about an issue, you're, you're subconsciously or consciously saying you approve or you don't care. And that's why the world is in such turmoil, because we've been silent on so many issues. You see your daughter going wrong. You, you see your, your son going, going wrong and you say nothing. Speak up. God will fight for you. He is fighting for you, but he needs to use your mouth to speak out. You see, you see the lack of integrity going on at work, and you're saying nothing. You say, well, it's none of my business, so I'm not going to say anything. And the Lord is telling you to speak, speak out. Speak loud and speak now. So when I say speak loud, I don't mean in volume. I mean speak so that you make sure that you're heard. Because some people speak, but they're not heard. And they're not listened to. He said, Speak out, speak loud, and speak now. He's like, we've spent too long seeing things are going awry and not saying anything. With wisdom, with love, you don't go off half-heartedly and just start speaking. You have to speak it with wisdom and love. But you must speak out. He say. God is saying right now, there are issues with education, with health care, with all of that, all over the world, that the church is silent over. And, you, and you're saying, well, I'm just a pastor. I don't know anything about health care. Ask. He said, he said he gives wisdom liberally. He said he loads us daily with benefits and one of those benefits is wisdom and he says wisdom is the principal thing and um uh and with all you're getting get understanding so he calls now for wisdom and un and understanding Wisdom is what you know. Understanding is how you apply what you know. Wisdom is what you know. Understanding is how you apply what you know. And you could say, I don't know anything about health care. I don't know anything about this and that. But, um... He's called us, everyone in the kingdom, to be world changers. And you don't have to change the world in Africa to be a world changer. You can change your world, meaning your community, your city, the people you influence. Because we have this term right now. Um, called an influencer. I believe 
everybody is an influencer in their own life. You influence your children. You influence your business partners. You influence those around you. Be an influencer. He has called you to influence and infiltrate the body of Christ. He's not called us to be silent. And not only like that song for worship, not only for worship purposes, but he wants us to speak on issues of education, of environment, of climate change, of the race, racial issue, of even little issues in our communities, because um, there are big issues that affect, affect the whole world. And there are little issues that are affecting your community, that are infiltrating your church, and you're silent about it because you don't know what to say. The Lord says, if you don't know what to say, I will ask and I will give the wisdom, and then you will get understanding. And there, there is... There are books on every subject. There are issues that the Lord wants the church to speak on, but we are not speaking on. There are issues that even I don't know that the Lord wants uh, to be addressed, and the church is not speaking on. We're just sitting over in our little corners and talking about it, but... Our little corners are not doing anything. Instead of uh, doing makeup tips and whatever, if the Lord has placed an issue on your heart, speak, daughter, speak, son, and he will back you up. He will back you up. He will, he will go to bat for you. You don't have to worry. So... If those people at work are are um, are operating with a lack of integrity, and you feel that you ought to say something, do not be afraid. God's got your back. And there, there is. I would be remiss though not to mention the other side. There are people who just speak on issues and they speak on everything and they they basically don't know when to keep quiet and God is saying I appreciate you speaking on those issues but there are some things that I need you to be quiet about because I'm working them out and if you speak too too suddenly it's going to hinder my work so, when you see an issue that is in your, what I, what did I say, in your craw, uh, ask the, before you go on social media, before you go to your boss, before you do anything, ask the Lord, what am I supposed to do with this issue? Am I supposed to speak on it? Am I supposed to... Uh, Keep it quiet because you're working it out. Am I supposed to bring a solution to this issue? What am I supposed to do? And he, he, he says, I'm loading you daily with wisdom. You just have to ask for it. There's even wisdom on your finances. And there's wisdom how to raise your children and all that stuff. And the last thing God wants me to say is, some of you know things that the world needs to know. And he's saying, speak out. And you're like, well, I'm just a single mom. Or I'm just this, I'm just that. He's like, I've given you the words to say. I need you to, to speak out, speak loud, and speak now. And
And what I said by speaking, I'm saying, make sure that you're heard. Make sure that you were not just brushed to the side, he says. And by your actions, it's not only with your mouth that you speak, but by your actions, you can speak too. Or your inaction speaks. You see all this garbage going on at your workplace, but you don't, you don't act on it. Sometimes you don't have to say anything, but sometimes you need to act. And you need not be afraid of their faces. Because the Lord, your God, is with you. So, so guys, thank you so much for being with me. Lord, break every speech impediment, God. Free our words, oh God. Free our tongues to speak your truth and your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Break every chain of not speaking, oh God. Open our mouths. Open our ears. Open our eyes. Give us revelation. Give us wisdom on the issues we ought to speak on. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I was thinking, when there's an issue that is constantly in your craw, that is constantly bugging you, maybe it's const probably it's constantly bugging you because you're supposed to provide a solution. Maybe that's why God has brought it to your attention. You're like, why aren't they doing things about this? Why aren't they acting on this? Because you are supposed to act on it. You are not supposed to wait for them to act on it. Or them to speak on it. You are to act on it. Son. And you know he's calling you to act on it. Because every day, every day you see something every day this issue is getting into you and you're, you're like being driven crazy with dreams of what to do it's like what why don't they do this because you you are supposed to do that you are supposed to speak out on that issue not they or or you you're called to bring it to their attention you are called to break the silence. You are called to make noise on this issue, to speak, to speak loud, to speak out, to speak loud, and to speak now. Many of you have things inside of you that you know are bothering you. They're irritating you to the point where you don't sleep at night. And he's saying, Silence is over. The days of keeping silent is over. You need to speak. You need to speak and you need to not be afraid. Pa I'll talk to pastors for a second. Pastors, there are things going on in your congregation that are driving you crazy. And you're like, what? why is this driving crazy? The Lord is calling you to speak on it without fear because he is backing you out. He's backing you up. And even if you are you are afraid of backlash or whatever, that's okay. Know that the Lord will be with you. And in this case, you need to push through the fear. You need to push through people's opinions because... As a pastor, you are called to be God's life-saving tool to people. The word that he's given you that you're so afraid to speak on 
is is called to save somebody's life. It's called to bring somebody out of darkness into his marvelous light. And yes, you might get some nasty social media comments or whatever, but who cares? Didn't you enter the ministry because God called you? Who cares what they say? The only person that honestly matters in that case is God. Who cares what they think of you? I'm not saying you shouldn't accept um, constructive criticism. We all need it. But I'm saying you shouldn't be stopped from speaking because you're afraid of what people will think or what people will say to you. Because the word in your mouth for your congregation will save a life. It will change the trajectory of someone's life. And God has given you that responsibility. And if you don't, the blood of that person will be on your hands. If you speak what the Lord has said to you, and that person still makes that de de detrimental mistake, your hands are clean. But if you refuse to speak on whatever issue it is, thinking that, oh, what, if pe what do people think of me? What if people leave the church? Um, their, their, their blood will be on your hands. If you don't speak up, God has given you a voice or and a platform for a reason, and you need to speak out. You need to address whatever issue you need to address, and you need to speak on whatever issue you need to speak on. And I'll tell you something: some of the issues you need to speak on have no biblical verse for it. There is nothing that addresses that issue uh, in the Bible. And you're like, well, I can't talk about climate change or, or um, things because it's, it's not in the Bible. How can I bring the text? He said, he said, sometimes um, my word won't come from a text. He'll, he says, sometimes in this day and age, you, my revelation will be stronger coming from your mouth. And I'm not saying that the word is not not important, not vital, but I'm saying don't let the lack of a scripture prevent you from speaking on an issue like, oh, that's not in the Bible. What? Uh, how am I supposed to speak on that? Either he will give you the word to speak on that, that is new, that is totally not in the Bible, or he will illuminate a passage in the Bible that does have to do with that and give you the re revelation about how to bring that word forward using that scripture. So don't let the lack of a scripture stop you from talking about an issue. Because you might say, well, what if they don't think it comes from me? Well, God will illuminate their minds. And if you are a pastor called of God to speak for God, it will be from God, even if it's not in the, in the scriptures. And like I said, God will back you up. I will talk to you later. Remember to speak out. Speak
speak loud and speak now. A lot of you said, oh, oh, well, I'll wait till tomorrow. I can speak on it tomorrow when I get the courage. The, the Lord said, your tomorrows well, one day will run out. I need you to speak on it now. He said, I, I need you to speak on it now. Because he said, it's somebody's life in the balance. And if you don't speak on whatever, that person will emotionally or spiritually or physically even die. He said, I need you to speak out now. He said, I need you to stop waiting for a better time. I need you to stop waiting for more courage. I need you to speak out now. And he said, don't be afraid to speak out. I've called you to be a voice. And don't be afraid to speak out. I've called you with a certain mandate. I need you to follow that mandate and speak out. And some of you, as ministers of the gospel, have lost your mandate because of all the business of church. Church church has two sides. There is the worship side, the side that we all see, the side of praise, the side of worship, and then there's this whole business side of church. And sometimes the business back side that we don't see uh, swallows up God's word. There are there are some preachers under the sound of my voice, I don't know who you are, that the mandate has been swallowed up by the business. And he's saying, you need to speak regardless of who says it's not politically correct or who says this and who says that. Even if they're your associate pastors or the leader of your board or whatever, even if it's your spouse saying don't, don't speak on that. If you feel that, if you feel by the Holy Spirit you need to speak on that, speak on it. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, um, Listen to wise counsel because the word says in, in, in counsel there's a, there's a, a multitude of counselors, there's safety. But he said, do not ever let the word of, of um, a counselor or your met, your um, your fear swallow up the mandate or what you've been called to do. A lot of people start off in ministry feeling called by God, but the whole business side of church, the whole administrative side of church, the whole side that we don't see swallows up the side that the Lord wants to speak and it gets so and it gets so easy for church to be monotonous like we we sing four songs uh, too fast too slow and then we have uh, uh, preaching for an hour or 40 minutes and he said I need you to to break the cycle and to say what I've told you to say. And he says again, don't worry if there's no scriptural uh, precedence for it. He said, I will illuminate the scriptures for you, although it may not seem that there's no scriptural precedence for it. Or I will just let you speak on behalf of me. When when Paul, 
when Peter spoke, there was there were no scripture like there was the Torah, but they they didn't use that. He spoke um, using the auspices of the Holy Spirit. And yes, the word of God is vital. I'm not saying it. Oh, it doesn't matter. You can just say whatever. But, but I'm saying the lack of a scripture. Don't let that be stop you from speaking on issues that the Lord wants you to speak on. If the Lord wants you to speak on having your pet spayed or neutered or whatever, or um, whatever your passion is, or global warming or education or whatever, as long as it's from him, his agenda, speak on it. Now, if it becomes your agenda, that's a problem. But... If it's his agenda and comes from the the portals of heaven, speak on it. And don't be afraid of backlash because God's got your back. He will always have your back. He loves you so much and he's called you. Okay, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up, it's your church, build your church. Build your church, build it from the ground up, we're your church. Build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up, it's your church. Build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up, we're your church. If every leader and every pastor and every mom, every dad starts speaking out. Speaking loud and speaking now. We are going to rock this generation. We've been silent for too long. We've been talking in our corners, in our groups, in our e-groups, in our boo crews, whatever, for too long. It's time that we speak out in love, not in judgment, in love, in grace. Not in judgment and tyrannical, tyrannical behavior. But we need to speak out in love because love is, is strong. A lot of people think... Uh, some people think that love is weak when we say speak the truth in love. But love is strong. Love doesn't only cover a multitude of sins. But God's love coming through the mouth of a human changes people. And whatever issue you address, address remember you're not just talking to a congregation. That congregation is made up with made up with people, and they're fragile. And they need hope. So remember, when you're speaking, to speak the truth in love and grace. But speak out, speak loud, and speak now. Thank you, guys. See you next week. Bye. Build your church. Build your church, build it from the ground up, it's your church. Build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up, we're your church. And when we start speaking out, speaking loud, and speaking now, um, 
I see people just running into the church. I see people just falling on their face, needing the kind of love we're showing, needing the kind of peace we have, needing the kind of um, just care we have. And I see different structures going on. I see uh, the church having a complete turnaround for the better. I see different ministries being erected. I see different ways of preaching uh, being started just just to free ourselves from what what other people would think and um, I see the church rising in power and grace and glory. I see the church going from glory to glory if we just speak out. Speak loud and speak now. Bless you for what you're doing. Lord, you are doing so much. Lord, you are just praise you and bless you, God, and honor you. Honor you right now, God. Jesus, thank you. There's a song I was listening to this week. I swear this is the last thing. There's a song I was listening to this week called I Speak Jesus. It's by Cherry. I don't know what her name is by Charity. Um, I forget her last name. But it's called I Speak Jesus. It's so powerful. I was listening to it like five times yesterday on Google. I'll post it today. Thanks, guys. Bye.